so grateful to have all of us to gather once again in the house of the Lord. We bless the virtual family and Reverend Chandler, who is on that side. We love you and God bless you. We're thankful for those that have gathered with us on this first day that our Lord has made. As we enter into worship this day, prayerfully for those of you that are in sanctuary, you received your bulletin. If you're too hot, just raise your hand. We'll make sure you get water and a hand fan if that will make you feel more comfortable. But in all things, we are so grateful for God and for all those that made this day possible. Will you join me as we enter into this time of worship? What a prayer. Hallelujah, Lord God. You did it again. You've allowed us to come and worship you in spirit and in truth and in all the highways and the byways and virtual ways. We are so grateful, oh God, to be in your presence and with one another. May this time of worship, oh God, bless you. May this time of worship open our hearts to hear what you'd have us say. Lead and guide us this day and we yield it now all into your hands so that this service, oh God, is not about us but it's all in thanksgiving to what you have done through Jesus, our Lord. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for this day. Amen. Amen. Will you please be blessed by our prelude? Give thanks by Brother Joseph Gordon.
naming him this morning is Revive Us Again. Reverend Chandler is with us virtually. Hi, Reverend Chandler. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Join us in our call to worship. Give thanks to God. Be kind. Give thanks to God at all times for everything. We thank God when we can and as we can for struggles, for solitude, for fears. Give thanks to God at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God that in Christ, our joys as well as our pain, our losses as well as our laughter are in God's heart and hand. Let the amen, church say amen. amen. Let us pray. Mm, eternal, loving, and ever faithful God, we thank you, we praise you, we love you, we worship you, we magnify you, we glorify you. Yeah. We lift up your holy and matchless name as we enter into this hour of worship, Lord, both in person, hallelujah, and virtually. We come with open hearts and open hands saying, fill us, O oh God, renew us, O oh God, revive us, O oh God, teach us, O oh God, speak to us, O oh God. Let this time of faithful and heart-filled worship bring you honor and glory and praise. And as we are filled by the singing of the hymns and the prayers that are lifted and the message brought by our pastor, we pray that we would not leave this space unchanged, that we would go ready to continue to tell the world about your goodness about your tender mercies that are new every morning, and especially about your love and your son, Jesus Christ, and the promise of everlasting life. Lord, we thank you for all that you've already done. 
everything that you're doing, even in this moment, mm -hmm. and everything that you are about to do in, with, and through us. Mm -hmm. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. The one who taught the earliest disciples how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. 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 As we continue in our worship this morning, there's a number of announcements that we would like you to know. As you can see, our reopening guidelines are effectively in place. And I thank God for those that came to worship this day. You did a marvelous job. And thankfully, it wasn't so hard. So please be mindful that we do ask you to wear a mask at all times. Make sure you keep your social distancing. Sanitize as often as you can. And just make sure that we keep space as we walk to and fro. We're excited that starting tomorrow, our Vacation Bible School is beginning with our young folks. If you still want a few come, I believe there's a few spaces. It's for the next two weeks. It's from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. A wonderful time has been planned by a Christian Education Committee. Know that they are looking for help in so many different ways. And so if you wanna be an assistant counselor, if you wanna help prepare bag lunches, if you wanna sanitize the space, all those ways would be appreciated. Contact Sister Jean or Sister Nelda. If you don't know who those beautiful people are, Sister Nelda was the one that checked you out, for, checked you in for those. Sister Nelda, just raise your hand for those in the sanctuary. And those at home, hopefully you'll get to know Sister Nelda. Tuesday night continues to be our time of prayer. And so all you have to do, if you wanna join them at 7 p.m. is to call 712-451. 0200 and to the code 614420, and you will join in with those praying. It also continues in the morning. There's a group, group, great group that believes in rising early in the morning to bless the Lord. And so they gather at 6 a.m. So you can call 605 313 4820 and to the access code 147284, and you will be with them that pray early in the morning. We're excited to share that we are going to have a fellowship extravaganza on our International Sunday, which is September 19th. And so we are celebrating in all we are, in all the diverse ways that we are. So please come to that wonderful worship experience where we're going to celebrate International Sunday and then go outside for a fellowship extravaganza. As you know, or you may not know, we have a food pantry that diligently has been feeding folks throughout its service since it began, but especially during this time of pandemic, and it's made a great difference. And so our next distribution day is this week, Tuesday. And so if you wanna contribute any of the canned meats, the staple goods, the cereal, or your financial, all of that would be helpful as we continue to feed God's people in this time and season. Last but not least, we wanna say happy birthday, happy birthday. So this week, Jimmy Floyd, Andrew Phillips, Marcus French, Andre Green, Gabriella Watkins, Sahara Rocha, and Mackenzie Gnapp. We wish you a blessed, blessed birthday. We pray that God's richest blessings will fall upon thee. Now join us for our tithes and offerings. this um, pandemic that we've been struggling with for a good amount of time. It's so important to continue our faithfulness in our tithes and offerings. The ministry of the church continues, the needs of the community that we serve continue, 
um, and the need to make sure that we are able to do that, the things that we need to do for our church community. Those needs continue. And so we thank you as always for your faithfulness. Um, and we ask that you continue as best you can. Um, in order to uh, provide your tithes and offerings to the church, there are several options. You can come by the church um, and deliver it yourself. You can drop it off in the mail. The address for those who don't know is 227 East Lincoln Avenue in Mount Vernon, city of Mount Vernon, Westchester County. You can also go to the church's website at fumcmvnewyork.org, click on the online giving link and follow those directions accordingly. And then as they say, there's an app for that. You can download the Give Plus mobile app and link into the church via our zip code and you can set up your um, offering and tithe there. However you choose to give in whatever amount you're able to give, you are, uh, we thank you. We're so grateful to you for your faithfulness. Um, and I think most importantly, your act of giving is an expression of your faith and it is your, um, your planting of seeds in the ministry of our church. So in advance, we thank you. Um, this morning, since this is our first Sunday of in-person worship, we're going to actually have a processional for our offering in the sanctuary. So I invite all of us on Zoom to um, be prayerful and celebrate with those that are coming to give their tithes because we're, we come to give with joy in our hearts and with thankfulness in our hearts. So as the music plays and the processional proceeds, I ask that all of us online just celebrate with those who are coming to give their tithes and offerings, and then we will lift up a prayer. Over to you, Pastor. I realize the processional offering may be new to some of us. So what usually happens is the musician will play some music and then you get to march down, bring your offering to the basket and march back up. But I noticed some of you have given, but I'm gonna let us give it a try for those that did not, so Brother Joseph will play, and for those, as you follow the direction of Sister Nelda and Sister Marlene, you can bring your offering down if you have not as yet, and go back. Amen? <laughs> indeed you are good you are good to us you bless us in so many ways you give us all that we need all that we could want all that we could hope for and in this moment we lift up this offering in thankfulness and with praise in our hearts and we ask that you bless it 
bless it and break it so that we might use it to further the cause of your kingdom. Give us the wisdom, Lord God, to use it in ways that will help the world know about your love, your mercy, your grace, and your son, Jesus. We ask it in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's put our hands together and give God a mighty praise that we are back in the sanctuary once more. Let's give God some thanks for praise that. The Lord. Because we've been away from each other for so long, and it is glad. We are glad to be in the service. Amen? Amen. Let us put our hands together and begin to praise. Amen? We may not be many, but we can praise. Amen? So I'm going to ask you to stand up. Stand up, please, as we bring the praise and worship. I know that we can with us. Oh, you can sing now. So please stand up and join us in Alpha and Omega. Amen? Amen. We got to praise God because he is our beginning and our end and our everything. Amen? Amen. And we got to give him glory. Amen? Because he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy of that praise. Amen? Yes, yes.
got time with us. Here we go. We give you. Hey, take your time. God is in the house. Let's lift him up. He is Alpha. He is Omega. He is the beginning at the end. We give him all the glory. He is worthy of the glory. And in the pandemic, we have him, that we are here through his grace, not because of anything that we have done, but, but, but through what he, what he has done. Let's give him some praise. Come on, church. Give God some praise right now. We don't have time to play games. We have to praise him while we can. Give him some praise, hallelujah. We didn't come here for a show. We didn't come here to sit here. We came here to worship, hallelujah. this morning. Oh God, lover of humanity, joy of creation, pour out your spirit within us that we may hear your ancient words in a new key. Inspire us to sing your praise in every land and with every generation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning will be Psalms 111 and can be found on page 562 in the Old Testament. Praise for God's wonderful works. 
Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them, full of honor and majesty in his works, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He's shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever yeah. to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Yes. The fear of the Lord in the beginning of wisdom, all those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Amen. Our epistle lesson today will be Ephesians chapter five, verses 15 through 20, and can be found in page 194 in the New Testament. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our, our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
that is the God we serve. Beloved, will you join me as we take a moment to pray and meditate on the word and thanksgiving for it all. Will you pray with me? Oh Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Oh Lord, our God, we come this morning to do none other just to thank you and to bless you because you've been faithful and you've been kind. Now, God, as we take a moment to meditate on what it means to be thankful for it all, I ask that the words of my mouth through this mask and the meditations of all our hearts, whether we are virtual or in-house, would be acceptable to you because you are always and all times our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. When I think about saying Thanksgiving, I just want to say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I praise the Lord this morning as I join with the psalmist that started off with simply praise the Lord. And like the epistle writer, I pray and ask and beseech that the Lord would fill us all with his spirit. So that as we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs amongst ourselves, that we will make singing and making melody to the Lord from the depths of our hearts, giving thanks to God. Thanks to God. Thanks to God, our Father, at all times and for everything in the name of none other than Jesus Christ, our Lord. The call for this day, as our series says, geared up for life in this new season, in this what I call a Kairos moment, is to live spirit-filled lives in thanksgiving to the Lord Jesus Christ for all things at all times. I pray, beloved, that all of us are aware that, and maybe I hope that you never forget if you know this truth, that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. I say that again, we are spiritual beings having a human experience and we are spirit who have a soul and just happen to live in this body for a time because when the time comes, it will rest and our spirit will keep living on. When I speak of Thanksgiving this day, I'm not talking about what we do in November on Thanksgiving because even anyone who doesn't believe in Jesus can do that. I'm talking about a Christian Thanksgiving that has not a November date, but is a way of living thankfully each and every day that God puts the breath of life in your soul. And Lord knows if we just took a moment, just not even think about the whole life, but just take a moment to look at this past week. Somebody should be able to say, thank you, Jesus, bless you, Lord. I love you, I'm grateful for all that you did in this week. Our scripture text this day, both of them beautifully remind us about what it means to live thankfully all the time, the psalmist. Oh, that sweet psalmist, whether when David wrote it himself or when the people gathered for worship and went to the temple to actually worship the Lord, they lift their praises to God. And it was nothing about what they wanted, but it was all about who God was and how God been and what God had done. It was not about themselves, but it was about the Lord Jesus Christ and the God that saved them. And the epistle writer, now coming towards the end, teaching the people on how they should live, wanted to remind them about what it meant to be spirit-led. Both teaches us that worship is a choice. Being thankful is a choice. Being dedicated to being spirit-filled is a choice. And so after they finish shouting their praises and hallelujah, the psalmist and the epistle simply reminded us that when you say praise the Lord, hallelujah, and if you want to live a spiritual life at all times, thanking God, that you must make a vow. You must make a vow and a promise to be thankful. The psalmist says, I will. Hmm. I will. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. I will serve him faithfully. I will serve him to the end. I will. There's a funny thing about what we choose and vow to these days. Many of us will say, I will to anything. Some of us will say, I will do it and maybe not do it. Some of us will say, I will and actually do it. And we're thankful when someone says, I will and they do it, yes? Because then we can trust them. But it's also interesting that the choice that I will do whatever I will do, it's always amazing to me about what people choose to do and what they choose not to do. In this time and season where there's so much going on in our world and as the world is beginning to open up and as it's gearing up for life so that the financial market can be well, not that people can be healthy, but so that the financial market can have its way, people are willingly choosing to go to work, go to the store, go there and that, but not everyone in the world is choosing to come to church. I'm just a little confused by that. I'm confused by that because the one that gives you breath and wakes you up each morning is deserving of the worthy and glory and honor and praise. And so my prayer is for Christians everywhere. When they wake up on their Sabbath day, that they will vow to come to the house of God, whether it's virtually or whether it's in the house, that they will make a decision that they will live faithfully unto the Lord for all the Lord has done for them, that they will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise and bless his holy name. This vow that we make, the psalmist reminds us, is that it's with our whole heart our whole heart. Brene Brown, a psychologist, I think, social worker, she speaks about wholehearted living. She speaks that wholehearted living is the place in your soul and your life when you make the courage and the uh, courage to actually choose to be creative, to be joyful, to be loving, to be peaceful. And that when you make that courage, sometimes you got to be a little vulnerable, but you make the decision to live wholeheartedly. If a social worker can teach the world what it means to live wholeheartedly, how is it that we who love the Lord, our God, doesn't understand that the heart that beats in our soul has already been designed to worship the Lord wholeheartedly, and that we have to give the Lord all that we got when we come to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. This vow we make with our whole hearts, in essence, means our whole life. That we, when we come to thank the Lord, there's some things that we need to do. We need to just thank God for all the deeds that God has done in our lives. For the children and the psalmist, they were thinking and thanking God for all the ways that God was great and how the Lord had prepared a table in the desert, how the Lord had opened up the doors and covered them at night and protected them and helped them fought. They recognized that all the Lord had done in their life and they chose to study and delight in those things of the Lord. Recognizing that the Lord was deserving all honor and glory and praise. If you were to take a moment to think about the great things that God has done in your life, if you took a moment to recognize that all the ways that God has covered you and blessed you and kept you, how the Lord has done beautiful things, wouldn't you believe and know in the depths of your soul that God is deserving of all glory, honor, and praise? And would you praise the Lord every time you thought about it? That's why they were called to remember and to remember was not just to think about it in their mind, but it was to describe in detail all the little intricacies of the way that the Lord had moved in their life and had done something beautiful for them. So they literally took time every year and almost every time they went to worship to recognize how the Lord fed them physically and spiritually. How the Lord made a covenant to be their God that no matter how many times they broke their relationship, that God would always be faithful and always be there and never leave them. How they were mindful of the fact that God had power in his hand and by his power, he opened the Red Sea and allowed them to walk on dry land. By his power, he allowed people to rise up. By his power, he saved and blessed them and gave them a heritage as a nation. 
proving time and time again, this is what trustworthy looks like. This is what faithful looks like. This is what just and redemptive looks like. This is what a holy God does. And that's why this holy God is awesome. Do you remember the deeds of the Lord in your life? How the Lord provided again and again and again and again. And just when you weren't sure how it was going to happen, the Lord did it just one more time just to prove that he was God. And do you remember that you as a Christian are in covenant relationship with the Lord? That your life is not your own. That you are dedicated and consecrated to serve the Lord your God. And in this covenant, no matter how many times you break, God will always be there. And that the power of what he can do and the power of what you can do is only because he gave you the power to do it. Amen. And that we too have a heritage. We are not just Jews, hallelujah, because we're not, we're Gentiles, but we are more than that. We are Christians. We have decided to follow Jesus. And because we are the body of Christ, Amen. we have a heritage. We are a nation. And not under the United States of America, but under God. Hallelujah. And this God is trustworthy, is faithful, is just, redeems, is holy and awesome. Do you remember when you think about it, do you tell someone that story so they could see how God's imprint is working in their life? And so they can then in turn be thankful what God is doing in their life. Is there a witness in the house that would tell? If you haven't told yet, I pray this week you go out and say, I am thankful to God because God did this in my life and God did that in my life. Personally, I am very grateful in this moment for just how God reminds me again and again that God is still God. I take a moment to give a praise report. About six weeks ago, God put on my heart that we are supposed to be a pop-up vaccination site. And I was like, okay, Lord, yeah. And God kept bringing it to my spirit, bringing it to my spirit to the point that when God annoys me, sometimes I confess I'm still being worked on. Sometimes when God keeps telling me something, it's a little annoying until I do it. And when I tried all day long, from the moment I hit the office in the evening, every time I tried, I tried, and I could not find out how to be one. So I finally surrendered and said, okay, God, if this is your will, you make it happen. Five minutes later, Brother Wilson comes in and said, hey, pastor, what do you think about us becoming a pop-up vaccination site? I went away, expected things. People were working behind the scenes, came back. And on the day I came back just before, I started personally getting frustrated because it felt like everything from this reopening to the pop-up vaccine, everything was just in chaos. And that night I went to bed complaining to the Lord. And then the Lord gently reminded my soul, whose vision was this? Who told you to do this? Do you remember when I tell you to do something, I provide. And I missed in my complaining all the ways that God provided people, even at the last very hour, bless all those angels that worked to the midnight hour to just make it happen so sweetly that it went off so well, I give God glory, that the next morning I rose up thanking God all day long, regardless of what happened, I was just thankful. I share that because there's something about a Christian Thanksgiving that changes the way that we look at life, that changes the way we walk, that changes the way we serve. And we have to learn, as the psalmist said, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And all those who practice it have good understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and all those who practice it have good understanding. Practice it means you gotta live it. Practice it means you gotta do it. And as you do it, as you live it, as you continue, you begin to fully understand what this is. And so when the epistle writer talks about be careful to live wisely, 
that was a call to walk wiser. All of us, no matter how advanced, no matter if you got a PhD in Jesus, we all still need to learn how to walk wiser in this world. Walking wise and not by the way we think is wise, by the education and degrees. And don't get me wrong, I think you need them. But you have to learn how to walk wiser and learn how to truly love God and love neighbor. Not just the ones you like. Not just those that you understand or think like you, but how to truly love God and love neighbor. And you'll recognize that it's all about relationship. It's about being vulnerable before God and being vulnerable before your labor so that in that space where creativity and love and joy and peace and the spirit moves. When you walk wise, you gotta learn how to redeem the time that God has given you. Redeeming the time is not like you pay for it to get it back, not that kind of redeem. No, it's about making the most of the time that God gives you, seizing every moment to give glory to God, taking a moment to be intentional to say, yes, this may be my job, but no, I'm going to dedicate it to this is my service to God so that how I live and how I walk, what I will do will inspire someone not to be like me, but to be like him. Walk and rise and recognize that in this season where COVID has changed our lives, that if you take a look at it spiritually, you'll recognize that we're in a Kairos moment. Kairos is that time that the gods, it's that space between past and present and future, that Kairos time where God operates and does things that you could never imagine in that place between the old and the new, that Kairos moment, we, our church, are in a Kairos moment. Our world is in a Kairos moment and our church is in a Kairos moment. We're in the place between what we were to what we will become. And if we are not walking wisely with the Lord, we might misconstrue the way we're supposed to walk in that in-between place. We need to understand and we need to be thankful and we need to be grateful for all the things that God is revealing. But if you don't pay attention to this Kairos moment, you might let fear and anxiety and stress and all the things that can distract you from what God is doing in the midst to miss the moment that you have to live for Christ anew. as God ushers in this newness of life. None of us fully understand what it's supposed to be. And so since we don't know how to do it, it makes sense to talk to the one that knows, yes? But it is God's time and God's call for us to respond. So we're supposed to be wise and not foolish. The Bible gives the example of being drunk. Notice that it didn't say drink, it said drunk. Some of you are mature and y'all probably don't remember your days back when you were in college, you drank a little too much and you hugged the toilet bowl just cause it was just too cold and cooled your face, uh huh? If you laugh, you know what I'm talking about. The Bible is warning us not to be foolish cause that kind of drunk lets you forget who you were. That kind of drunk let it all hang out, literally and figuratively. That kind of drunk took your attention away and allowed you to be caught up in anything. That kind of drunk causes accidents. Hmm. If you get a chance, you should talk to Sister Vanessa, let Sister Tanya let her shout for a moment. Let her show you the picture of what a drunk driver did and how she's still here to worship God today. That kind of drunk destroys. But being drunk in the spirit is a whole nother thing. Being drunk in the spirit allows the spirit of God to fill you to the depths of your being that allows you to worship God freely without excuse, but it allows you to be so in tune with God that you know where to walk, how to move, what to do, what not to do, and you are in decency and in order. When the spirit floods and takes over your life, where you don't know, you do know. When you're drunk in the spirit, that which you don't understand, you have clarity. 
When you bask in the spirit and allow the spirit to take over your life, you'll be amazed at what you see and how you move and what you do. And you become thankful, thankful that you are where you are with who you are in him. Don't be foolish. There's many ways to get drunk, you know. There's many ways. Maybe it's not liquid. Maybe it's food. Maybe it's the way you act. Maybe it's the way you talk. There are many ways to get caught up in the wrong thing that takes you away from what you're supposed to be instead of being in line with the spirit. And interesting enough, when you're drunk in the wrong way, you are not thankful in that space. You're bitter and you're angry and you're frustrated and you're violent and all kinds of things. But when you're drunk in the spirit, there's love, joy, peace, righteousness flowing through you. Mm. I want you to get drunk in the spirit. Now it might look different. Some of you might be loud like me. Some of you might just be like my mom who just sways and lifts her hand. And, and as long as the heart that gets flooded with the love of Jesus is what matters by the spirit of God. Because as you walk wiser, you become a witness for the Lord. This witness that you are, you, every day you live, you breathe, you talk, you show the world what it means to follow Jesus, what it means to serve. And people will know if you're a Christian or not. And in case you haven't noticed, there's a lot of church hurt out in the world. And a lot of people are not thankful to God and they are actually upset with God. And when they meet someone that's a Christian, they get confused because they're acting just like them. But the call is to walk wiser, to be truly the best witness by grace, because that's the only way you can do this until he comes again or he calls you home. And right now in this time and season, there is no time to be foolish. Mm -mm. There's no time to just act out in any kind of way. There's no time to be anything other than what you're supposed to be in God. So we all got to gather to discern God's will. That's why spirit-filled people, they gather for worship and they worship the Lord. And they gather and they speak. They sing. They make melody together. They give thanks to God the Father. They speak, they proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and how he saves a soul and how he saves your life and how he will be there to the end when others might leave you. They sing and worship and thank God we can sing and worship again. Yes, it's with a mass, but you can still make melodies to the Lord. And there's something about when the body of Christ gets together and they worship the Lord in spirit and truth. There's something when your spirit who's worshiping God with your whole heart touches another spirit. It just. Giving thanks to the Father is part of being wise. Giving thanks to Father. Now, you may not like Father, you might prefer God, you may prefer Majesty, Alpha, Omega, you pick your name, but whoever it is, your higher power that is still the Lord Jesus Christ in the triune God, make sure you give thanks to God at all times for everything at all times, for everything, at all times. That's probably harder. Because there are sometimes you just don't feel like praising him. Sometimes, at times, life might have feel so overwhelming that you can't even see him. At times when you're called to thank and praise and bless the Lord, you just can't because life is just so hard. 
And that sometimes it's not because of anything you did that make life terrible, but it is for everything. For the Ephesian folks, when Paul wrote this to them, their everything was just the goodness of all that God has done. But to other churches, he would tell them about the suffering and then the bad times. And what I've discovered for everything, when you thank God for everything, it's not thanking God for the situation, it's thanking how God is moving in everything for your life. If I were to ask you to choose a moment of what your all is, what would it be? Would it be just this week? Would it be since January to now? Would it be from the day you were born until the moment you're living? Whatever your all is at all times going forward from this day forward, my prayer is that you will always remember to give thanks to God the Father who always keeps you, provides, watches over, loves, forgives, Always, God's never-ending love never fails because it's steadfast and it lasts forever. And at all times, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's something about that name, you know. There's something about the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, all possibility opens up. In the name of Jesus, you can see the authority of how the Lord has authority over your life. In the name of Jesus, you feel the power of God moving. In the name of Jesus, you understand because of what he's done for you, how you're supposed to honor and glorify him, that he is worthy to be praised. And in the name of Jesus, when you can't depend on anything else, you can depend on him. Mm. Mm. To be thankful for all is to be thankful for all that God has done. Oh, if I could sing, and I can and I won't. I feel like COVID turned me into a bass. But there's a beautiful song that simply says, thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed. My soul is at rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. First church, we have a lot to be thankful for. We do, we do, we do. And so may we all start to be thankful for all the Lord does for us. And watch how not only our souls are blessed, but the world is blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.
as we now come to the throne of grace to bless the Lord. For those that may be with us and you don't know this Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that I was talking about, I promise you he's a good God and he's a great Savior. And if you don't know him, we would love to make sure you do. So you can let one of the monitors know or myself know after church if you're in house. But if you are in the virtual ways, just put it in the chat and the worship host will make sure we get your name and your number. And if you need prayer, we are grateful and thankful that there's a Lord that always answers prayer and always hears our prayers. And so if you need prayers, let us know either in chat or tell somebody. And if you don't know where to call, if you're listening on the phone and you need to call us, we invite you to call 914-668-3334. And I promise we'll take your information and those that love to pray will call and touch and agree with you. But for now, in this moment, will you pray with me? Hallelujah, Lord. Glory and honor and blessings unto thee, Lord God. Lord, you are worthy of the glory, and you're worthy of the honor, and you're worthy of the praise, and my soul blesses thee. Our souls bless you. For all the ways that you have been good and kind and faithful, Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you forgave us when we fell short. We thank you that you provided when we didn't know. You gave us strength and perseverance and you guided us and you lead us. We thank you, oh Lord, that even in the midst when we were crying, you wiped our tears to remind us that you are always there. We confess, oh God, sometimes it's hard to stay thankful. But Lord God, if your spirit will infuse us as we open our hearts and minds to you, we believe, oh God, that we can, by your grace and your mercy, live faithfully unto thee all the days of our lives. So Lord, this day, we thank you for the things that we do see. We thank you that you provided, and that we thank you that you cared, and we thank you that you covered us. We thank you that you protected us. We thank you that you loved us. We thank you that you forgave us. We thank you, oh God, that you have been faithful more than we could ever imagine. And we're grateful for your never-ending love. And so, Lord, because you're that kind of God, we boldly come before the throne of grace, laying at your throne all those that need you most. Be with those that are sick, oh God. Be with those who have lost a loved one, oh God. Be with those that are going for cancer surgery this week, oh God. Be with those, oh God, who are hungry and don't know where their next meal is going to come from, oh God. Be with those, oh God, who are lost and don't know how to find their way home. Be with them, oh God, and be with us as we try to be your disciples. Help us, Lord. Infuse us with a new, fresh anointing of your spirit so that we may be drunk in thy spirit so that we can serve you boldly. And if we're tired, oh God, restore us. And if we're excited, oh God, set us on fire to show your goodness in the land of the living. And God, always, whatever we don't know to ask for, you understand the groans of our souls and answer that too. Because we believe as long as we love you. As long as we thank you, as long as we bless you, oh God, we can see your hand guiding us. So never leave us and never forsake us. Draw us closer into your bosom, oh God, so that we can be all that you're called to be, just not individually, oh God, but collectively the church of Jesus Christ. So that we can do it all in the name of Jesus, the one who blessed us with life the one who saved our lives, the one that will come again and bring us to glory, that one who will set your kingdom fully on fire. It's in his name, sweet Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Well, church family, we've come to the end of worship, but your worship does not stop here. It continues as long as you have breath and go into the world. I need a moment, just a moment, I'm trying to catch myself, to give those that are in-house some direction. After the benediction and the postal, we ask you to stay where you are. We'll send you out in sections one by one as our beautiful monitor sister, Marlene and Sister Nelda guides you. So please rise for this blessing and benediction. Oh. May the Lord who grants you breath, may the Lord that blesses you and keep you be with you all the days as you walk in thanksgiving. May the Lord infuse your soul and your life and your heart with his spirit so that you can boldly go before the world and testify to a good God or to help heal and save a broken world. May your thanksgiving be lived out loud in Jesus' name as you go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen.